Profanity is the lowest form of entertainment. Profanity is vulgar, unhealthy, and immoral. For our entertainment, we have made heroes of swine. Entertainers would have you believe profanity is normal, funny, and makes you sound cool. In fact, it makes you a fool. Here are some swine who, were it not for profanity, would have nothing to say. Lenny Bruce was a, quote, comic who made a name for himself using profanity. He made a living off cussing and saying disgusting things in the 1950s and the 1960s. He took himself too seriously, imagining that he was a champion of free speech when he was only a foul-mouthed drug addict. There was a B-movie about him in the 1970s. He was played by a mediocre actor and was lionized as a visionary. In fact, he was just a drug addict who got famous for swearing. He died ignominiously and pathetically of a drug overdose. The movie inferred he was driven to it by a Puritan society. What nonsense. George Carlin was funny as the hippie doopy weatherman on television in the 1960s. Then he did the routine Seven Dirty Words and became famous. He made a career out of having a filthy mouth and trashing social norms. Fools follow fools and he had a big audience. Millions hung on his every word as he trashed modest people. Like many entertainers, be they actors, musicians, or athletes, he scorned the country that made him rich. A modern, quote, comic made this telling statement. When you need a laugh, make a joke about your dick. Seth Grogan takes this notion to new lows. Many modern, quote, comics make their living off profanity. They make fools of the naive young who did not hear such things when they were children at home. Advertisements for new movies assure customers the content will be vulgar and offensive. Entertainers think this is pure genius. They give new meaning to the axiom that there is a sucker born every minute. Hollywood gets rich normalizing profanity. It fancies itself a teacher. Cussing with the words Jesus Christ and God routinely break the second commandment. Even modern children have learned to text OMG. To shock the sensibilities of modest people is considered artistic genius when it is in fact just a peep show. To be appalled by profane language 
is as uncool as the kid who turns down meth in front of his friends or as the woman who dresses modestly and sees to it that her daughters do the same. The famous writer Philip Roth could not write a page without a swear word. His forgettable work depended on it, as did the work of many modern writers. Once you tune your ear to this, you hear, you hear the lame dialogue of mediocre writers. Hollywood has always been on the vanguard of bad behavior. It was the first in mass media to stereotype groups. It did it to blacks, Chinese, Japanese, Mexicans, women, and countless other groups. Now, with the same sense of certainty and righteousness, Hollywood stereotypes Christians, whites, heterosexuals, and Midwesterners. Free speech, my eye. People today get censored by their employers and threatened by their government for merely voicing conservative views and Christian beliefs. Marlon Brando is thought by entertainers to be an artistic genius. He himself said that actors were not artists. He raised two children. One was a murderer. The other was suicidal. Some people in my family think the movie The Last Tango in Paris is a masterpiece. It is, in fact, pornography. Forrest Gump could see that. I know men who think that the late author Charles Bukowski was a genius. Strip away the profanity and pornography in Bukowski's writing and there is nothing but a pathetic alcoholic. To argue that his degradation is the brilliance of his writing is to bathe in a sewer and pretend like we all wash there. Last Thanksgiving, I had dinner with my cousin. I sat next to her 16-year-old granddaughter. I told the story and used the expression, pissed off. The 16-year-old girl admonished me. She said I had potty mouth. She was right. I have stopped using that expression. We do not need laws against profanity. We need only to spend our money on entertainment of which we approve and to shun that which we do not. Ignore the sellers of purient interests. They may fool you once and get a laugh out of you, but when you listen carefully, you hear their resentment towards modesty. Do not let them fool you twice. Spend your money elsewhere. <laughs>